Okay, uh, we had some packets out front. Hope you picked one of those up. If you uh, did not, or if we run out, this information is all published on the uh, the website. Uh, the first item of business is we have our minutes from our scheduled public hearing on September 13th of 2018. Uh, several of you were at that meeting. Does anyone see any uh, corrections or additions or any changes that we need to make to this minutes? before we sign these into the record. Hearing none, we'll sign these into the record as presented by the clerk. This time we have our uh, item on our agenda for our uh, financials, and we have uh, presented y'all copies of those on our uh, general fund balance and also the enterprise and special account fund. And so, wait, wait a minute, I'm, just, I'm getting out of order here. We got one more minutes to do. So we have also our minutes from public hearing. public hearing, okay. I'm sorry, this first one was the public hearing from the 13th and then we had a regular meeting for the 13th. Thank you, I didn't forget about that right off. So does anybody have any corrections or anything to add to the minutes of September 30th meeting? September 13th meeting of our regular scheduled meeting. Sorry about that. Hearing none, we'll move to approve these into the record. So we have uh, presented a balanced budget uh, to you here tonight, and those are in your packets. Uh, we have the general fund that's broken out by department. Uh, we are projecting an increased revenue this year. I think it's just shy of $1.4 million in additional uh, revenue that's coming into the general fund. Uh, we had uh, meetings with uh, most all the department heads and all the uh, constitutional officers over the last few weeks going through their budget information and the request and making sure that uh, we were meeting all the obligations that we have as a local county government and providing the services for our county. Uh, it was great pleasure this year to uh, get this done. It went much smoother this year since we had a baseline to work from from last year having a good budget. Uh, so uh, it was made uh, life much simpler for me this year because I went through line by line of each one of these. Uh, we had very good uh, <clears throat> communication with everyone, good input. Uh, every, every department and every budget entity didn't get everything they wanted, but we were able to provide them everything that they needed to operate and function efficiently and effectively. So is there any uh, questions or comments at this time about the general fund budget, and, and then we also have the enterprise fund and special revenue budget as well. So is there any uh, questions, comments about these budgets that are being presented? Uh, one thing additional to add, we did pass last year that any purchases over $200 do require a purchase order. Uh, so we put that system in place. That's worked very well. Uh, I think some of our department leaders first thought that was going to be a nuisance or was going to encumber them a lot of additional work, but uh, they've actually found it's been a good thing because it allows them to be able to better see and manage their budget. Uh, they're able to access their departmental budget through the uh, computer system, so each department has access that was limited in past years under the old system, and then it allows them to uh, uh, show those incumbents or those purchase orders so they're not accidentally overspending and forget about a purchase or 
sometimes there's a delay in billing or if it's a project it may be two or three months later so everyone's really been able to utilize that as a tool and then anything over five thousand uh, dollars i actually personally review each of those purchase orders to make sure that we have the the funding in place and that it uh, meets their budget requirements uh, so that's going very smoothly and then any purchase order over fifteen thousand dollars we self-imposed in our resolution last year anything over fifteen thousand dollars it's not a normal everyday course of business uh, especially anything that's a capital expenditure we bring those here to you to the public uh, regardless if those are in the uh, the budget or if we're having to amend the budget to make those happen which we've not had to do all of those that we have done this past year have been in the budget but we want to be open and transparent with the citizens to make everyone aware anytime we're making a purchase of over fifteen thousand dollars and so we want to come to the public forum uh, most of the time the department head or whoever's requesting that expenditure out of their budget is usually here to answer questions we provide copies of the documentation uh, to let our citizens know how their tax dollars are being spent and make sure those are being spent properly uh, that policy wasn't in place until october uh, when we passed the budget but that was a self-imposed uh, item that we put in on the purchase orders and also that limit so that applies to everyone that's in this budget system here for walker county that's all that also includes the commissioner's office and so i cannot go out and spend money without coming to you publicly if it's going to be over fifteen thousand dollars so uh, that applies to, to every entity in our county government including myself so it's been a, uh, a a good policy everyone has embraced it and we've not had not one hiccup with that and it's really uh, made things run much smoother uh, than the first several months I was in office till we could get the new budget in place so that's one thing that made this year much easier is because that process and system had been in place for a year so any questions or comments on the uh, on the budgets proposed okay so So we do have a okay there we go lay this up okay so item number one we do have a resolution here it says a resolution to adopt the general fund budget containing estimates of proposed revenue and expenditures for fiscal year 2019 beginning october 1 2018 and ending september 30th 2019 whereas the sole commissioner of walker county is the governing authority of walker county georgia and whereas on august 30th 2018 the sole commissioner and the county finance officer prepared and submitted proposed general fund budget for the fiscal year 2019 and placed copies of the budget in the commissioner's office for review by the county residents and whereas notice was published on august 29 2018 in the walker county messenger the legal organ of walker county the proposed budget was available for review and the public hearing on the proposed budget would be held on september 13th and the general fund budget would be considered for adoption at the public meeting on september 27 2018 whereas a public hearing was held on september 13 2018 to receive public comment on the proposed budget pursuant to ocga 36-81-5 and whereas the sole commissioner having studied and reviewed the proposed budget deemed the approval of the uh, revised proposed budget to be in the best interest of walker county and therefore be it resolved the sole commissioner of walker county georgia that the budget attached hereof exhibit a and made as part hereof of the year beginning october 1 2018 and ending september 30th 2019 is adopted approved to be effective october 1 2018. so resolved and adopted the 27th day of september 2018. so i will sign this and then our clerk will attest this Okay, that one is on the general fund budget we have resolution r41-18 this is a resolution to adopt the enterprise fund and special revenue the enterprise fund consists of our landfill sanitation transfer station 
also the 911 center and then any uh, grants that we receive and uh, handle also passes through as a, as a special revenue. So that's why these have to be divided out separately uh, as an enterprise and special revenues from the general fund. So this is tracked from an accounting standard to meet uh, standard accounting practices for the state of Georgia. Those have to be separated. A resolution to adopt the enterprise fund and special revenue budget containing estimates, proposed revenue and expenditures for fiscal year 2019 beginning October 1st, 2018 and ending September 30th, 2019. Whereas the sole commissioner of Walker County, governing authority, uh, Walker County, Georgia, and whereas on August 30th, 2018, the sole commissioner and finance officer prepared and submitted a proposed 2018 enterprise and special revenue budget and placed copies of the budget in the commissioner's office for review by the county and the residents. Whereas notice was published on August 29, 2018, in the Walker County Messenger, the legal organ of Walker County, that the proposed budget was available for review and the public hearings on the proposed budget would be held on September 13, and the Enterprise Fund and Special Revenue Budget would be considered for adoption at the public meeting on September 29, 27, 2018, whereas a public hearing was held on September 13, 2018, and received public comment on the proposed budget pursuant to OCGA 36-81-5, Whereas the sole commissioner having studied and reviewed the proposed budget deems the approval of the revised proposed budget to be in the best interest of Walker County and therefore be it resolved the sole commissioner of Walker County that the budget attached hereof in exhibit B and May part hereof of the years beginning October 1, 2018 and ending September 30, 2019 is adopted and approved and effective October 1, 2018. So resolved and adopted the 27th day of September. Okay, on to the fun stuff. We have a proclamation for you tonight. By the sole commissioner of Walker County, a proclamation, Fire Prevention Week, whereas Walker County is committed to ensuring the safety and security of everyone who lives and works and visits our great county, and whereas the fire department responded to 352,000 home fires across the United States in 2016, resulting in 2,735 fatalities, according to the National Fire Protection Association, NFPA, and whereas four out of five deaths occur at home each year and the fire death rate per thousand home fires has grown 10% since 1980. And whereas Walker County residents should identify places in their home where fires can start and eliminate those hazards using smoke alarms which have been provided to save lives and whereas Walker County first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education and whereas Walker County residents are responsive to public education measures and are able to take action to increase their safety from fires especially in their homes and whereas look listen and learn be aware fire can happen anywhere the 2018 fire prevention week theme effectively serves to remind us that we need to take personal steps to increase our safety for fire now. Therefore, I, Shannon Whitfield, sole commissioner of Walker County, do hereby proclaim October 7th through 13th, 2018 as Fire Prevention Week in Walker County and I urge everyone to be aware of their surroundings, look for available ways to, uh, out of their homes in the event of a fire and other emergency, respond to smoke alarms, sounds by uh, exiting immediately and to support the many public safety activities and effects of Walker County Fire and Emergency Services during Fire Prevention Week 2018. In witness thereof, I have a proton upon to set my hand and calls to the seal of Walker County to fix the 27th day of September 2018. Let you attest this.
And with us tonight, we have one of our great staff members, Mr. Paul Linder, is here representing the fire department. We want to present this to you, sir. And we appreciate all of your hard work and dedication and for your leadership to Walker County. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, this time that ends our regular scheduled meeting and we will close out our regular meeting. Thank you for coming tonight.